something that you mentioned when, when, when we touched on different approaches, having different risks, and you mentioned then uh, the potential of, 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 uh, sort of irritating or damaging nerves. Mm. And so if we, if, we, if, we, if we do that conversation, but, but more generally, what, what sort of are the risks of, of nerve damage in a typical hip replacement and, and what could that cause? Yeah, so, so I mean, classically, yeah, the risk of nerve, a proper nerve injury after hip replacement is much lower than the other risks we've talked about already. So rather than it being sort of one in a hundred, it's more like one in a thousand. Yeah, we're, kind of, we're, we're, getting, we're getting close to the bottom of the list here. Yeah, 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 exactly. But, but it's really important to talk about because you know, the consequence of a nerve injury can be really debilitating yeah. and really severe. So obviously nerves, you know, they give you sensation in the skin and they control the muscles and, and you know, movement. So a nerve injury could leave you with numbness or uh, weakness of the muscles. So there are a couple of the big nerves that run across past the hip joint. So at the back of the hip, there's the sciatic nerve, you know, from sciatica. Mm -hmm. um, so, so damage to that nerve can lead to numbness in the foot um, and to weakness of the foot, so a drop foot. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, if you if you if there is a nerve injury, um, you know it can recover. It obviously depends what's happened to the nerve. So if it's just bruised or it's stretched, or you know, sometimes nerves can just be really, um, you know, really sensitive. You know, people say that you know the nerve. I just looked at the nerve wrong. You know, <laughs> um, so so yeah. So 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 nerve injuries can range from anything from just a little bit of numbness, which resolves after maybe a couple of months. Mm -hmm. or to you know numbness and weakness which you know takes two years to get better okay. um, because nerves can be really really slow to recover mm -hmm. or it might be that it doesn't recover you know and you're left the patient is then left with you know significant numbness and weakness um there are you know you can do surgery to to repair nerves if a nerve has been you know cut or a suture, a stitch around the nerve or something's, you know, physically pressing on it, then, you know, that might need to be explored, mm -hmm. um, you know, with someone who, who does operate on nerves. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there are things that you can do if that's a problem. Uh, one of the, one of the sort of, what we feel one of the sort of cardinal signs for a really worrying nerve injury is where there's a nerve injury with pain. Right. If the patient has pain in the sort of distribution of the nerve, then it's likely there's something is really still irritating that nerve. If it's just numbness with maybe some weakness, then maybe that's maybe not something that needs kind of an emergency operation to sort out. Right, okay, okay. So, so that sciatic nerve at the back and at the front is the femoral nerve and the femoral nerve, um, you know, supplies some of the sensation at the front of the leg and the thigh and the quads muscle, so the thigh muscle at the front. So if you have, you know, weakness of that, that can be difficult, you know, to, to straighten your leg out. And that's yeah. important when you're walking. Yeah. Um, obviously you need that power you need collapses when you put weight on it yeah, yeah, yeah. um so again so the you know the approach which way you're going in depends on which of those nerves might be at, at high risk and mm -hmm. also it's obviously patient specific so you know one example of somebody who might be at a higher risk of having a nerve problem is someone who's got a really severe problem with the with the leg maybe it's very very short mm -hmm. or it or it's been dislocated the hip the hip there their own hip has been dislocated maybe since birth or something like that. So it's very, very short and you're having to kind of stretch the leg to get the length back. So we know that the, that the nerves can be sensitive to that stretch. So the kind of the, the shorter it was before, perhaps, you know, the more likely to have a problem with, with nerves afterwards. But, but, you know, obviously people, we are aware of these issues and, and then you would counsel the patient appropriately. say, look, for these reasons, you know, you're at slightly higher risk of, of this problem, you know, than, than the routine.